Greetings everyone and welcome to this short tutorial on Homepage Basics in QuickBooks Desktop. Hi, I'm Kathy Grosskirth and I'll be your facilitator for this short tutorial. I am a QuickBooks Pro Advisor at the advanced level in both desktop and online and I'm also an Astronomy author. Hope you enjoy this tutorial so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, as you can see we are in our Sample Rock Castle construction file. And we are already in our home page as we have our preferences set up to automatically open the home page. And there are basically five specific areas in our home page that we will be talking about, which includes the Insights tab, which is a separate component. But let's go ahead and talk first about the vendors area. And just real quick, as you look at the overall home page, you'll see that this is the standard workflow that QuickBooks wants you to follow. And depending on what preferences you have set up, which we'll do a deep dive into the preferences area in a future tutorial, you'll see exactly what you should be doing as you're going through each process. Now, since this is a construction company, they do have purchase orders enabled. And so you can go ahead and create a purchase order. And then you can also receive inventory and there's also a drop down here which will let you receive inventory with a bill and without a bill. And then the other thing you can do is you can enter bills against inventory. You can also enter bills from vendors for stuff that has nothing to do with inventory. And then you can pay those bills which is the standard workflow. And this will make sense as we get into some of the other deep dive stuff. Also, if you have sales tax issues and things that you need to deal with, you can manage those through here. Now, the beauty of this is you can also go to your vendor center to view your vendor list and to manage your vendor data. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and click on this hot link and it's going to take us to our vendor information center. And we are going to do a deep dive on the vendor center. So we're not going to talk about it in a whole lot. Over here, you can see that you have your active vendors listed and then whichever one of these is highlighted is what you'll see here. Well, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. I just wanted you to see that you can access that from here. Same thing with your customers. They have sales orders enabled. And again, this is all going back to how you have your preferences set up in your QuickBooks file. They also have estimates enabled too. And you can actually create invoices from estimates or you can actually create just the invoices themselves and then you can receive payments from those invoices that you have created when you get payments on those invoices you can also create statement charges that will be included on a billing statement you can also assess late fees for overdue charges and you can also create statements and then you can also issue refunds and credits from this here and then going into this next item is our banking item where you can record the deposits and everything. And it's kind of a cross thing. But in, in the home page, it's showing as being under banking, but it's basically dealing with customers as well. But I want to go ahead and show you. You can also do the same thing with customers as with vendors. You can click on this hot link here and that will take you right to your customer page, which is laid out pretty much similar to our vendor page. As you can see, our active customers show. And then Christy Abercrombie is the customer that's highlighted here. So her information is shown here. And when we do our deep dive into these different topics, we'll go into and talk more specifically about each one of those. But for now, we're going to go ahead and exit out of that by clicking on the X in the corner, bringing us back to our home page. Down at the bottom, if you have the Employee Center enabled, if you're using QuickBooks payroll and that kind of thing, you have these options here where you can go into the payroll center to pay employees and do all that stuff. You can enter time and there's also a drop down here that you can click on and it'll say that you can use a weekly timesheet or you can enter a single activity. And one thing that we'll talk about when we get into this kind of stuff is that you don't necessarily have to have employees to use the time capturing capabilities and this is real important 
to know, especially if you're building projects and wanting to track your time for projects that you're doing, even if you're not an employee per se. You also can get in here to pay employees by check or direct deposit. You can pay your payroll liabilities from here. You can also process payroll forms for your federal and state things and just all sorts of things that you can learn about labor laws and stuff like that. You can click on the drop down here to go into those types of areas. But I want to go ahead and do the same thing that we did for our vendors and customers. We're going to click on the employees tab. And if you're using QuickBooks Payroll, or even if you're wanting to use this module as a backup to an outside payroll source, this is the area, and it's somewhat similar to the other two areas that we looked at. You have your active employees here, and then there's an additional tab on payroll. And then we have the active employees, whichever one is showing up is the information that you'll see in the left screen, and you can edit that but we won't get into that right now I just wanted you to see that so again the, as you can see this is very helpful we also have the company area which will allow you to view and modify your chart of accounts and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that icon so you can see the chart of accounts will open up and again we will do a deep dive on the chart of accounts and talk a little bit more about that a little bit later but you can access your chart of accounts from the home page you can also view and modify the list of items and services that you sell. And again, this is going to be a real important tutorial. So when we do that tutorial, you'll want to tune in because you want to know how to set up your items correctly so that you can use your invoices and your bills and estimates and all those other forms to capture all those wonderful things so that you can adequately track those and make sure those are being recorded properly. You can also click on this access key inventory tasks drop down to be able to go into the inventory center or to build assemblies and to do uh, all these other things here okay and then if you want to order checks for quickbooks through into it then you can do that here there's also a calendar that you can access if you use the calendar feature some people do some people don't and then at the bottom we've got the banking area where you can actually record the deposits on one or more customer payments for your bank account and this means that you're probably using the undeposited funds and we'll talk a little bit more about those areas when we get to those because there's a lot that you need to know about using undeposited funds and how to use it properly if you want to reconcile your bank statements and your credit card statements then this is where you would go to do that and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that real quick so you can see that the, where you can access the begin reconciliation process and then you can choose the account that you want to reconcile if you want to reconcile a credit card account you can click on that and then the statement date is the most recent statement date as long as you've got everything done right and we'll do a deep dive on that so don't worry about that but just know that you can access that from here you can also write checks for an expense that you have not entered as a bill and we probably won't be using that a whole lot but this is where you can access that and I've clicked on that so you can see and it looks just like a check and as long as you're recording those in consecutive order the next number that pops up should be the check number so I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that and go back to our home screen you can also view check registers so I'm gonna click on that and if you wanted to go to the checking or savings or petty cash let's just go to the savings real quick so you can see from there and you can see the check register for that account and we'll go ahead and click and exit out of that you can also print checks from here and this is real important if you're doing like a check run and if you have any checks that are already set up to print then these will you be able to access those and we'll get into more of that in a future tutorial you can also click on here to enter credit card charges and that'll bring up the credit charge credit card purchase and charge screen you can also issue a refund or credit on the credit card doing that either one one will just depending on which button you choose 
but we'll get into more of that in detail later. So that's basically the overview of the home page, and then we're going to go into our insights. Now, our insights is a little different. The insights kind of give you an overall visual of where your company is. It shows you what your net income is for a certain period of time, and you can filter that to show either by month, but right now we've got fiscal year to date, which our date of record for this file is Tuesday, December 15, 2020. Shows you what your net income is, and it also shows you your income versus expenses, and it shows you that through this timeline here. And then you can also see at a glance what your open invoices are, and if you hover over any of these little areas, you can see that it shows you have 24 open invoices, zero overdue, and zero pay within the last 30 days. And then it also shows you your expenses each month and again if you hover over these areas you can see the breakdowns of those and you can also drill down into any of these like if you wanted to drill down into the open invoices you can click on that and it will also show you the list of the and you can work with those a little bit further to to refine and and do some filtering but we're not going to do that right now so I'm going to get out of that and I'm going to maximize the screen again so you can see and then you can go on to the next screen and it'll show you some other things, previous income comparison. And you can also filter this and customize this. So right now they have all these checked, but if you remove any of these check marks, it'll only show, like if you don't want to see the previous year comparison, you can remove that check mark and that'll go away after you click OK. You won't see that anymore. So any of those that you want to get rid of you can say so you don't really care about any of these but for the most part you may want to see them all so that's why they were probably all checked but you can go ahead and scroll through the rest of these so you can see what's in here and you can filter by monthly quarterly weekly yearly top customers by sales at a glance which is kind of helpful there Income and expense trends, so you can see those at a glance. All these visuals are helpful. Business growth this year as opposed to last year. So all these areas are really helpful. Net profit margins at a glance. And previous year expense comparisons. And then it just cycles you back through to the beginning again. So I'm going to click back on the home page tab here. And so that's basically it for the home page, which includes the insights tab. I hope you were able to learn a little bit about how to navigate these areas a little better. And I'm looking forward to doing some more deep dives with you in each of these areas. And hope you'll come back soon as we add more content for you to learn more about QuickBooks Desktop and online. So enjoy. And thank you for joining us.